What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and Sprint is getting quite the Android lineup. The Motorola Photon 4G just came out on the 31st for $199.99. Now it goes up head to head against another hot Android phone, the HTC Evo 3D. This is the dogfight battle of all time. I mean, I say that in every dogfight video, but this one really is because they're both high-end awesome dual-core devices. One's global roaming capable, one shoots uh, video in 3D, video and pictures in 3D. So which one's the best? Which one's the one for you? Which one's the best balance? of features and performance. We'll find out in the dogfight, but first, special thanks to our gang over at Best Buy. They're so good to us. They hook us up with all these phones, things like this and this, for use in our One Paw Bandit game. So when you go into Best Buy Mobile, you don't pay rebates. I hate rebates. I hate dealing with paperwork. I hate waiting. I hate waiting, period, much less eight to 10 weeks. You don't have to deal with it at Best Buy Mobile. But enough of that, let's get into it. Dogfight, Motorola Photon 4G, HTC Evo 3D. Which one's the best one to have? We'll figure it out, starting right now. Here we go, two of the highest end awesomest, awesomest, not sure if that's the, uh, the best word to use there, but awesome Android devices, and they're both on the same carrier. Here we have the Motorola Photon 4G available on Sprint, and it's available now as of the 31st for $199.99. So brand spanking new just came out. Then we have the HTC Evo 3D, the replacement to the popular, or not really replacement, more like the successor, kind of the big brother, if you will, of the HTC Evo 4G, that revolutionary Android device it really kicked Android into overdrive last year. So it's a great, uh, great addition to Sprint's lineup. It's nice to see these high-end Android phones coming to the nation's third largest wireless carrier. So to give you a quick rundown of the specs here, one gigahertz dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor over here, eight megapixel camera on the back that you can see with a dual LED flash and very different design cues on both of these as well. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Front-facing camera here, 4.3 inch QHD display with Pentile technology. So while both of these are QHD displays, this one has Pentile technology, this one does not. So I'll show you some of the differences, at least what we can see with the naked eye or the camera eye, if you will, in just a second. Android 2.3 with Motorola's applications platform. Don't let them hear you call it Moto Blur anymore because that's not what they're calling it. They listen to consumer feedback, determined that Moto Blur was so tarnished, at least that's the going rumor, that they changed it from Moto Blur to Motorola's applications platform. That was what the uh, low end, you know, or not low end, the kind of watered down version of Blur, if you will, used to be called. So that is for everything. So Motorola's applications platform, and you can really see the changes here as opposed to something like the old version that launched on the Atrix or something that we saw on the Devour last year. Some huge changes, and it looks a lot better to me. It's you know a lot cleaner, a lot easier to use, and it's a lot faster, most notably. So you can see, very quick, very easy to use with this blue color change, and down here with this dock that's very similar to, uh, to iOS and to TouchWiz, so something to keep in mind there. Then you have the HTC Evo 3D, and I don't know why my fingers keep pressing buttons here. 1.2 gigahertz dual core, so you've got two dual core devices here, but this one has a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor. It has dual five megapixel cameras in the back, so you can shoot 3D content. Now this one shoots video at 720p, as does this one. The press release originally said that this was gonna shoot 1080p in 2D, and 720p and 3D, not the case. The press release was wrong. They came back a couple days later, actually about a day later, and said that that was wrong, and that shoots 720p in both 2D and 3D. So keep that in mind. But 4.3 inch display over here, it's a little bit of a longer display than what we remember from the HTC Evo 4G, and it is a QHD display, so it's high resolution, but it doesn't use Pentile technology. So one thing you'll immediately notice is uh, that this one on the left side, the Photon seems a little bit brighter, but when you hold these up, I don't know if it's gonna work really well on the camera, but let's try holding these up as close as we can, and you can kind of see the pixelation. We can kind of see my fingerprints too, but you can kind of see the pixelation between uh, the Photon and the Evo 3D. Look at the pixelation differences over here, especially down here. See that pixelation down there in the bottom as opposed to this one. So brighter over here, but pixely. Not bright, or not as bright, rather but not pixelated, so something to keep in mind. Front-facing camera, it's also running Android 2.3, and it's running the latest version of HTC's popular user interface since 3.0. So you can see a lot of changes, and we'll go over these, uh, a lot of changes on both of these, because these are both late versions of their you know, respective user interfaces. So you have Motorola's applications platform over here. You can see they've gone with this blue color scheme. It started on the Motorola Droid X2, and it's kind of gone through since. And let me do a quick rundown so we can move through this. NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile pre-installed, Sprint Music Plus, Radio TV, Worldwide Zone, ID, and Mobile Wallet. Now, interestingly enough, this is one of the first high-end, if not the first high-end, if I recall, uh, Sprint device to have Sprint ID out of the box. Kind of interesting. It's interesting to see that they're moving that over into uh, Sprint's high-end device lineup. I hope that's not 
a trend. I kind of expected that in the low-end devices, but not in the high-end devices. But anyway, Sprint ID pre-installed. And the good thing about a lot of this stuff is you can uninstall it. So you don't want Sprint Music, you don't want Sprint TV, you don't want Sprint Zone. You can uninstall that stuff. I believe ID and Mobile Wallet, and I think Worldwide are the only three that you cannot uninstall. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it's that one. Oh, just kidding, Sprint Zone you can't uninstall. And Mobile Wallet you can't either. Let's try Sprint Radio. There we go, okay, so you can install some of these as you see. Sprint TV, uninstall, and then NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile. So NASCAR is not your thing, you can get that stuff off of your device. Sprint really listened to their, uh, to their consumers there, and you can do the same thing on the Evo 3D as well. Anyway, some Sprint stuff out of the box. You can see the changes here in the folder structure. You can organize by all apps, recent, downloaded. You can go directly to Sprint and just see how fast it is. That's one thing that I've been really impressed with. I think the Tegra 2 is by far my favorite out of the dual core processors. I think it's just the, the most raw and fast. We saw that in the G2X and it's speedy. And I've been really impressed with it on the Photon as well. Let me get my fingerprints off that. It looks terrible. And so you can see there the lock screen uh, as well. But anyway, you know, this blue color scheme, you can see kind of the white down here as well on the dock, and you have four different icons, and you want to replace those, you certainly can. Take camera, for example, replace the camera down there, and then uh, whenever you want to bring something to the main screen, we'll bring Fandango out, for example, we'll add it to home and bring it right down there. So it's quick and easy. So one thing I like about uh, the widgets as well, just to give you a quick run through of those, this is a Motorola widget, and you'll see that they're organized in the menu by Motorola and by Android widgets. Now one thing I really like about Motorola's, they're a little brash, they're not as good looking as HTC's, which we'll show you in just a second, but they're customizable in terms of size. Big, big pro for me because, not necessarily the case here on this home screen, but you go to one of your seven home screens on this device, and let's just say the space is a little bit tight. Well I can get in one widget here, one here, one here, and maybe have some room left over for another one of these little toggles without having to deal with extra space. So you go to something like this, you know, that's one size fits all. If that clock doesn't fit on the screen, it doesn't fit on the screen. Something like this, I can go over to the weather, I can customize it, make it as small or as large as I want to within reason. Now it doesn't always, you know, uh, listen to you when you want to make it a certain size. It may not be able to go to that size, but you can see it's quick and uh, very, very easy to use. And you know, I like the customization options. So that's very, very cool. Now you look at HTC Sense, they've made a lot of changes not just from two point, or not just rather from you know what we saw in the Evo 4G to this, but even from 2.0, which is what's on the Inspire, the Thunderbolt, etc., up to this one. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> choke there. Pardon me. Uh, but you can see here, out of the box, you get 3D games, Blockbuster. Uh, let's go down here. NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile, Quick Office, uh, and Spider-Man 3D, 3D games, Sprint Mobile, Sprint Radio, TV Zone, and then go down here, the Green Hornet. You do get that free movie pre-installed. And you got kind of a similar file structure here as well. You can go to your frequent apps, your downloaded apps, and it'll show you what's on the device. So, you know, kind of similar to Motorola's applications platform over here, but you can see differences in the things like the notifications bar. First of all, all of the apps that you've ran recently are up here at the top. And then you can see, you know, notifications, text messages, things like that. And we'll go over here into quick settings, which I really, really like. And let me clean this one off too while I'm at it. We'll go over here into quick settings. And actually, not to sidetrack, but here's the lock screen. This is new to Sense 3.0 as well, and you can put custom things on it like weather, stocks, uh, etc. And then you can have these little custom icons down here at the bottom. So let's say you want to, you know, go to Blockbuster. All you have to do is drag it into the ring. So if you have your frequent apps down here, quick drag, let it go, and you're going to go right in to uh, to Blockbuster. So pretty cool there. And then if you want to go back, you just slide it up, and you're in business. So there's Blockbuster, and then there it is. So this carousel effect. Uh, as well. But back to what I was saying about the quick settings, you have that over here so you can go into Wi-Fi, you can access your Sprint hotspot, your 4G, without having to go deep into the settings. It's pretty quick just to go over that little tab in the notifications bar. So one of the most popular, actually this is the most popular uh, Android overlay so far as I can tell. And you know, there are a lot of customization and personalization options as well. They've really taken it to a new level with uh, the Evo 3D and with Sense 3.0 because not only can you change the scene and the skin, which this is one of my favorite things. Like for example, I can change it from blue sky to burgundy. I can hit apply and you'll see how it'll change. It's gonna look pretty similar out of the gate. But when I scroll down here, just kidding, not there. Here you can see the burgundy color. So a lot of different personalization options. And here's where I can change that lock screen like I was telling you. I can make it just a wallpaper. I can make it photo album, I can make it weather, stocks, etc. Make it stocks, for example. I can hit apply if I want to. And then whenever I come back out, if I had stocks, it would bring them up 
on the home screen. So not only that, I can add widgets as well, and then I have my HTC widgets in addition to the typical Android widgets. And this is what I was saying about Moto Blur. I like the customization option. You do get a couple different size options. You can get a smaller one if you want to, or the month view, or the agenda. Just using calendar as an example, but we'll go to select here and hit OK. And you can see that once, you know, it is that size, but you can't change that size. It's got to fit somewhere on that screen. So something, a little something I like about Moto Blur or on Motorola's applications platform, rather. One day I'm gonna stop saying Moto Blur, but uh, it's hard even for me to stop doing that because you know I've developed a habit over the course of the years. But that's something I like about Motorola's applications platform. Now another thing you'll see in Sense 3.0, this new carousel effect, and a lot of little things like some icon differences. You can see that, that and that's an icon difference. And then of course the menu structure like I showed you a minute ago and the way that the apps scroll down, they don't scroll down one line by one line, they scroll down page by page so you can see that it's scrolling down. Another cool thing, this has access to htcsense.com. So you can access uh, the HTC Hub, for example, and download new wallpapers, you can download new themes, and you can download cool stuff like that, ringtones, etc., on your phone. So you don't have to deal with what comes on the device. You're not stuck, at least, uh, to the stuff that's on the device out of the box. So nice to have that customization. You want to go on and try to find a new theme instead of the burgundy. You don't like burgundy, you don't like blue. You want something different, well, you can hop on there and download that. So very, very cool there. Nice to see that customization. Just to go over the build really quickly, this is gonna be one of those things where I think out of the gate, you know, the first thing anybody sees is the actual device sitting on the rack at the store. So you're gonna see how these look like that. Let me get that light out of the way. Like that, that's what they're gonna look like in the store. And it's gonna be very much, uh, you know, one by one kind of thing. You're either gonna love one design and hate the other, or you may, you know, kind of like both, or you know, you may not like either of them, but they're very distinctly different designs. The uh, Photon reminds me a lot of the Motorola i1. It actually reminds me of an IDEN device. And you can see over here, it's kind of got this industrial looking, you know, volume rocker and camera shortcut button. You have the camera on the back. Now you do have a kickstand on this device, which when you activate it, it kicks it into alarm clock mode, which is pretty cool. And that's on the back. And then you have your HDMI port over here, micro USB charging port, uh, headset jack, and then your power button. So it's a good looking device, you know, and it occurs and actually feels uh, a little bit less thick to me than the Evo 3D. Now it's actually a hair thicker than the uh, the Evo 3D, but it feels just by the curves, even though they are more brash curves, they uh, because of those curves it feels a little bit lighter and a little bit thinner in the hand. Then you have the Evo 3D, which is a little bit more of a blocky kind of slab-like device, but a little bit different. It has that texturized battery cover back here. And then unlike the Evo 4G, the battery cover wraps all the way around with your you know 2D, 3D camera toggle here, camera shortcut button, volume rocker, and then you have your micro USB charging port, headphone jack, and your power button. Now you don't have an HDMI port on this device, so that's something to keep in mind on the design front. But definitely, you know, two different designs that are gonna appeal to two different people, but they're still, you know, both awesome devices.